A keyhole view into the past. These silent films shot by local photographer Weta Bunny Grant reveal a picture of Craftsbury life in the early 20th century. Some places you recognize, like, oh, that's the Bailey House, and then some activities, things that are still happening here. Kristen Yuri is library director here at the John Woodruff Simpson Memorial Library, which received the films as a donation. Beyond a glimpse at local life, the films include clips of the East Hill Players, a theater group started by the library's founder, the late Jean Simpson. She loved theater and she proceeded to put on summer theater with community members um, for 50 years. Simpson's theatricality is still on display across the library in the form of souvenirs from her life and travels. Over time, I think people came to know that there was this cabinet of curiosities happening, and so things were donated by different community members. One of my favorite things is tiny little dried up potato, and it was donated by Fred Slicer. He carried it in his pocket for a month, and it really helped with his rheumatism and so he donated that to the library. <laughs> the spirit of this library is very much a gathering place, a place to connect, and I feel very lucky to be in this role. We return to our ski map and follow the village trail south to Craftsbury Village, home to the town hall, post office, and the Jenny, one of two general stores in town. Emily McClure, Jana Smart, and Kit Basum run the store. Each has local roots, but McClure was living in California when a food movement in the Northeast Kingdom inspired her to buy the store and return home with a new passion in tow. One of the things you brought to the Craftsbury General Store, now the Jenny, is this incredible wine selection. I'm a wine lover. I worked in Los Angeles in food and, food and beverage for years and just wanted to bring that here. So we've got a little bit of everything. If you think this wine collection is worldly, wait until you see what Jana Smart brings to the food counter. Although we do have comfort foods, you know, mac and cheese and Swedish meatballs, we also have a lot of more global flavors, you know, from Asia and India. There's also self-serve pizza and a soup of the day, but I fell in love at the cookie counter. I wanted like my dream cookie. It's got brown butter, really good Belgian chocolate, pecans, and sea salt. The famous cookie. That's a phenomenal cookie. While the worldly offerings make this general store unique, it's the quality Vermont-made meats and produce that make it beloved. Part of what is really important to us is sourcing as many local ingredients as we can, both to support our local economy and all the wonderful producers and farmers who exist here with us. Some of this produce comes from just down the road where we find Pete Johnson, founder of Pete's Greens. And in about a month, these crops will be growing really fast. Truth be told, most Vermont greenhouses in the middle of a cold winter stretch are little more than large freezers. You know, they're not really happy right now. Which is why this year-round working farm stores cabbage, beets, and onions starting in October. Carrots, too, will last pretty well till about May, typically. And they get better and better in storage. The flavor gets sweeter and sweeter. People love our carrots. Okay, kids, lesson one. This is what a fresh carrot looks like. And this is what a CSA, which stands for Community Supported Agriculture, looks like. Members get a box from our farm sent to them, and it's basically a share of what our farm produces. Michelle Norfolk and Jesse Haslip help to run the program that sends custom boxes of Pete's Vermont-grown produce across the state. For this week, for instance, we have cress and uh, a little bit of collards and a bunch of roots that are our storage crops. They also offer recipes to help you make the most of it. And the benefits? Eating with the seasons, it just makes you feel so much more vibrant, supports the local community, and it tastes better. 
and a lot of that great old footage, mm. the film you see in the show tonight, a lot of it comes from about two decades worth of Craftsbury history, and a lot of it focuses on the library founder, Gene Simpson, because the filmmaker <laughs> happened to actually live with her. So, And a lot of the footage includes local Girl Scouts, mm -hmm. because Gene ran the organization there for 30 years. It also really showcases the flavor of the town, tying together the past and the present, which is really nice. And John Woodruff Simpson Memorial Library, well, that was named after Gene's father. Coming up, Erica goes deep.